This is the original rainbow, okay? It's the watch that kind of put me on the map and it was my internet debut and I was nervous as anything, you know, and it, this brought me through it, you know, so it's become like the most special piece to me. I absolutely love it. Welcome back to What's On Watches and welcome to today's special guest, Oscar. Hey. Thank you for coming, Oscar. Thank you for I having really me. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Now, some of our audience may recognise you already. You are the face of official watches. I am indeed. And they've probably seen quite a bit of your series in Jardin de Mayfair. It's yes. become quite the staple. So how long have you been with official watches? Uh, so I've been with official watches for a short time, which is a year and a half. Right. Um, we've been really just filming away and hopefully, if some of you guys have seen the content, just kind of rocketing it up uh, as best we can. Yeah. Well, our audience members that are a fan of the modern watches will definitely be familiar with your work. You have stocked some incredible pieces, but I believe today you've got a few vintage gems to show us. I have. So basically I chose these um, from our master collection. Uh, we do stock a great deal of vintage, but we also mainly stock, you know, the new sort of all singing, all dancing stuff. Um, we have over 350 pieces wow. in stock. Okay, now they're not all kept on site at the same time. I have to say <laughs> that. But um, we have a lot of watches, very, very special watches. And um, I picked a few to show you today that I thought your audience might be interested in because I actually follow you guys. I followed you guys before I worked in watches. We have so. one fan. It's yeah, a great yeah. Place to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I have to say, I think your reel, uh, the reel that you did on how to become a watch dealer, is probably <laughs> the, the best. Um, sort of explanation that I've seen. So uh, congratulations to you for that. Thank you very it. much. Yeah, That's very great. kind. That's very kind. Um, so yeah, so I picked a few things out that I think would be um, of interest to your audience specifically. I hope so anyway. Um, so wow. yeah. There we okay. go. <laughs> yeah. They are some wow pieces. Yes, That's indeed. incredible. So this is what we do, okay? We do yeah. the wow stuff. Um, so I have a uh, Sea Dweller Double Red. It's the 1665. It's a Mark IV. Yeah. Uh, so this is a very special piece. Incredible, yeah. Awesome, doll. That's 1977. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I'm sure you guys know this, but the Sea Dweller is the sort of the thing that they set out to solve was the problem of helium. Yep. So um, the single reds and the double reds are the most collectible. The single red has no helium valve. The double red does have a helium valve. Yep. Apparently there is one single red out there in the world with a helium valve. It's a prototype. Wow. And I bet and you've got it hidden no, away Exactly, somewhere. it's in my pocket, it's in my pocket. <laughs> uh, no, we're, we're after it. If, if they're out there, let us know, we're after it. But uh, I expect to see that in an auction one day, I'm sure. Yeah. Hopefully, if, if it's out. Can we have a quick look at oh, this? Please, absolutely. This is this is for you guys. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is realistically, in terms of vintage Rolex divers, and you can tell how special this is because of how gentle I'm holding it. <laughs> but this is this is pretty much the pinnacle. This is the grail of Rolex divers. Absolutely. Mark IV double red dial is um, part of my French book rocking arch. To, <laughs> to those who don't know, but this is an incredible piece, and I love the loom plots on these. They're yeah. just incredible. So no outer white gold markings like you'll see on some of the later 5513s and the modern sea dwellers, just applied tritium. Yes. And this dial's in inc incredible condition. So that's where we really come into play here. So basically we make sure and only buy pieces that we think will be like, make a client say what you guys said when I opened that thing, which is yeah. wow. Okay, so um, you'll see that the beveling, everything is all yeah. intact and exactly as it should be, nice fat lugs, none of these sort of like really over polished ones. Now, don't get me wrong, I really respect the guys out there who own the ones that are beaten up and all that kind of stuff because actually I have a huge respect for people that wear them. Yeah. And I think that's really, really cool. Um, but our clients tend to want these kind of like show pieces uh, and that's what we sort of have here. One of my favorite things about these is the the crystals, the dome. Yeah. So I love the way that it distorts as it turns to the sides, because obviously all the new modern Rolexes, they've sort of solved that That's problem that now. Way, yeah. But actually, was it a problem? You know, this is the OG. This is the stuff that like yeah. that would have actually been used for diving and things. And yeah. I think that's just so cool. Well, I mean, how these even came about, like you said, with the issues of helium, and then there was the 5513, and then the 5514 with the prototype helium. That's another incredibly rare watch, guys. But this is just sensational and uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm so, I'm so glad you like it, yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. 
what's next? Because I think this one in the middle, I think is probably one of the most iconic watches of all time. It is indeed, it is indeed, yep. Okay, so this is the 6262 Paul Newman and it's an extremely special watch. It's yeah. 37 millimeters, so it looks quite small when it's in with those. Um, but what is perfect and so special about this watch is it's transitional, so it doesn't have the screw down pushers, yeah. um, and it also has a very interesting story behind it. So this watch is one of the few 6262s left in the world which is what we call a true full set. Now, what we mean by true full set is that it has handwritten receipts from the day it was purchased. Wow. It also has service receipts. It has a service receipt from 1982 from Rolex for 35 pounds. <laughs> it's got the guarantee, it's got the booklet, it's got the other little leather pouch, it's got the original guarantee and also the service receipts. That's a proper special piece. So obviously with it not having the screw down pushers, it's pre-oyster, so it's just Rolex Cosmograph on the dial, so like you say, that really cool transitional dial. Yes. But that is an incredible, original condition. Yeah, so it was sold in 1974. However, it actually sat there for four years. Wow. So the amount of people out there that must have seen this watch and passed on it, um, I think there were two grand, something like that. I mean, I'm sure with inflation, it was probably still pricey at the time. Of course it was, but it's a very, very special watch. Yeah. Uh, the meat and potatoes on this is 335,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, but if anyone is looking for any of these pieces, please do get in touch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 335,000. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Do yeah. you take check? <laughs> as long as you cash it on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want to touch, I know we're talk looking at vintage pieces, but I want to talk about the watch on your wrist. Yes. Because that is that is a wow piece, that's an impact piece. Talk to me about that. So yeah, I'm glad you've noticed it. This is my go-to meeting watch. Okay. If I have a meeting, I like to wear this. Yeah. Um, so this is, the, this is the OG, this is the original rainbow, okay? So it's the 116598RBOW. Why it's so special to me is because it's the watch that kind of put me on the map. Okay. So my first ever YouTube video was on both Rainbow Daytonas. It was on the Rainbow uh, Rose and it was also on the yellow. Okay. And I was wearing the yellow and it was my internet debut yeah. and I was nervous as anything, you know, and it, this brought me through it, you know, so it's become like the most special piece to me. I absolutely yeah. love it. Honestly, I mean, seen these in person occasionally just passing and you always see photos of it and you always think wow that is a, that's a bit much it's actually incredible in person i'm yeah. blown away and the, the color grading on the sapphires is exceptional rolex employ gemologists and gem setters okay and they work together on the piece to mm. set the stones the gradients must be so perfect, okay? Like so perfect that they discard any stones that don't match perfectly. So when people can't understand why these watches are 300 grand, 400 grand, actually, when you see the work that goes into setting a watch like that, yeah. of course it's worth that kind of money. And the subdials are incredible. They're the incredible, they so the they're light. flakes. They're, yeah. they're flakes, so a lot of people think they're meteorite, but they're not, they're just flakes, yeah. and they're, they're really, really carefully done. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's such a special fire. piece. And again, every time that I sort of wear it in my meetings and stuff, people do seem to always have something to say about it. It's yeah. a watch, like, do I say like it's got a cult following? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, there's just so many celebrities and people that have sort of worn them over the years yeah. that they've become kind of cult. And, well, I think uh, John Mayer really put it on the map. In the uh, John Mayer put every watch on the map. <laughs> he, he doesn't stop. Well, there's a little one that's poking yeah, out here, a, which has really caught my eye. Is that a tropical There's dial? a little cheeky, and it's a 6263 Tropical. Um, so what makes this watch so special is that these subdials were actually black when yeah. the watch was born, let's say. Um, and they stayed that way until the sun actually turned them brown. Yeah. Um, so this is a true 6263 tropical. Um, and wow. I know that, you know, there's sort of aftermarket dials and things like that now and there's mm. all sorts of ways that people are making them tropical but yeah. this is the real yeah. thing 6263 tropical as 
it's supposed to be. And the great thing is with this, in comparison to the Newman, obviously now you've got the screw down pushers, so this is an ROC dial, and it's it's absolutely fantastic. But to see these tropical sub dials, they've gone that perfect shade of brown. Yeah. And it also ties in really nicely with the tritium loom plots on the yeah. outside there as well. It's incredible. And also as well, you can save yourself dramatic amount of money. These are coming in at around 70K. Yeah, and that's the beauty of Daytona collecting because to the everyday person you put that on that it's like oh there's a couple of differences in the yeah. dial but it goes from being a £70,000 watch to the best part of nearly half a million yeah. Yeah, just yeah. with those little niche it is absolutely which yeah. is fantastic yeah. but I love the drop it goes very well with my jacket yeah. actually which uh, may be a reason why I should buy it <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah I also have a few of the kind of what we would call our kind of everyday stuff. So these are two that have come fresh out of the oven. Wow. Uh, Labrassus oven. <laughs> so basically, APs, Patex, like the top level stuff, this is the stuff that official watchers are known for. Yeah. Okay, so this is our, our end of the market. This is what we deal with. It should also be noted, because one of the myths about our switch I don't like and I like to sort of like set straight as and where I can is that we still stock all of the normal stuff. So we've got all the subs, all the Daytonas, everything. So if anyone's looking for any of those, you can always contact me. It's it's new, of course. So I know you guys are vintage, but I just thought it'd be nice for you to see a little bit about what we... We can appreciate these awesome watches. Hey, these are absolutely incredible. I mean, let's start with yeah, this one. please. Wow. Okay, so this is the 26591TI, and it is a super sonnery, and it is one of only 35 made. It's extremely special, and I'll let you hear why uh, yeah. up at my microphone here. One thirty-five. Absolutely incredible. I know. Wow. Yeah, it never gets old. Yeah, and it's impeccably light. It's a big watch, but it feels, and obviously being titanium, yeah. it's absolutely incredible. And yeah. I, the dial is, for me, is it's just, I know the sound, absolutely everything on this yeah. is just absolutely perfect. Apparently, in back in the day, people would be in the dark, right? No street lights, okay? Yeah. So you come out in London, you've got your little pocket watch, yeah. and you can't tell the time. And you, I assume you've had a few beers in this situation. <laughs> And you click your pocket watch and it tells you the time in the dark. Wow. And I think that that is just so cool. Yeah. Just these little things that like what they've, where they've come from. And it just drives me wild. And it's still awesome that AP do pieces like this. Yeah. And they, they, I just, I'm blown away by that. But this one, this one here. Yes. Has, yeah. has some wow factor. Okay. So this does. So as far as I know, we're the only people in the world with this watch. Okay. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that's still the case now. Um, we've actually had two. This is our second one. Uh, the first one we sold immediately. Yeah. Uh, so we had to get another one. Now, unfortunately, it has been given a new name, the Jay-Z. Yeah. Uh, but that's because he was the only other human being that had the watch when I got it wow. uh, to review. So I could I literally, John Mayer wasn't wearing it, which was a shock to everyone. <laughs> uh, he must have had it, he just kept it in his... So we need to rebrand this as the Oscar then. It's not the Jay-Z, <laughs> yeah, exactly. the Oscar. Yeah, so they call me officially Oscar, so uh, <laughs> maybe one day we'll get a watch named after me, but that would be a long, long time, yeah. <laughs> um, but what I love about this watch is that it's a 50th anniversary, okay? So the 50th anniversary of the Royal Oak, they brought out the whole range with the 50th anniversary yep. rotor, but they only brought out one open-worked flying tourbillon, okay? And this is the open-worked flying tourbillon. And when I say that that wow. is like a work of art, it's incredible. Um, it's just mad. This is the 26735ST and I just, yeah, it's a, it's a no words piece. Yeah. This is hands down the best AP I've ever held. And I never thought I'd <laughs> yeah. say that with that on the table yeah. as well. Yeah. But um, I wish it had a better nickname, apart from yeah. Jay-Z. Nothing yeah. against Jay-Z. No, but listen, good for him. You yeah. know what I mean? The thing is, you've got to be give props where it's given, right? Yeah. That's a guy that has managed to build like a following. We should all be thankful that yeah. these guys are bringing watches to the forefront because yeah. I think yeah. that anyone who has a love for watches and you know has done well enough in life that they can add them to their collection and talk about them and show them off and wear yeah. them on their stage shows or films or whatever. I love that watches are now becoming where I see cars. So like, you know, Ferraris and things, maybe if they post a new Ferrari today, it's gonna get like 
know, 10 million views or something. Mm. In five years from now, it looks like watches are going all right up behind them, you know, and I think that that is a really, really exciting yeah. prospect for our industry. It's hard to decide which one I'd choose. Right, well, <laughs> do you know what? We're going to segue perfectly into something because I actually wanted to play a game with you. We're going to play a game of this or that. The rules are very simple. I'll show you two watches of a similar value. You let me know in the comments which one you'd like to keep for yourself. And when we hit 20 comments, I'll let you know which yeah. one I'd keep. So, first up. By the way, that was awesome to see live. I've only <laughs> ever seen you through my phone. That was great to see that. Well, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So yeah, your choice is not an easy one. It's my not easy no, at all. No, I tried to make it as difficult as possible. Yeah. I, I really want to see everyone squirm. And I've become very close with a lot of the people that play, okay? Mm. So I know them and I, sometimes I think I know what they're going to choose and then they go the other way uh -huh. or I go the other way. Am I predictable? Which one do you think I'm going to go for? Which one do you think I'm going to go for? I'm going to go for. Game of this or that. Oh, you're gonna go for that. Yeah, you're yeah, bang on the money. Yeah, yeah so, this is, it's just, I love that. Yeah. And in any other situation, it'd be a very hard time to yeah. put something next to it that I couldn't choose. But yeah. this, this seals it for me. Hopefully, these have been something that's been a little bit interesting for yeah. you guys. Um, and also, you guys are very kindly gonna come and do a video on my channel. Yeah, um, we look forward to doing that. For du Mayfair, I can give you guys a tour. And I have left some things up my sleeve for that uh, okay. video. Some bit of vintage and also some crazy stuff. So well, I've no. left them up my sleeve for then. A massive thank you, Oscar, hey, seriously. Absolute pleasure. If people want to find you, where do they need to go? What's the best details? Okay, so uh, the Instagram main page is uh, official watchers all one word and then if you want to find me and my day-to-day -day stories and stuff it's yep. oscar underscore official watchers yeah and youtube we are official watchers one fantastic um so thank you very much for watching guys thank you very much to oscar and make sure that you check out what's on thanks for watching and we'll see you soon thank you